What's going on? Vincent Rappasardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. Thank you to those who've liked, commented, and subscribed. I really appreciate you guys. Make sure to turn notifications on so every time I post, you get a notification and you can come join in on the conversation. I love my YouTube subscribers. Love you guys. Twitter, not a huge fan of Twitter. I'm really not. Too many trolls out there. Everyone's trying to make each other look stupid. I, I'm not a huge fan of Twitter, and I don't like that they do a lot of censoring. I'm not a big fan of that, but I love my YouTube subscribers. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. So let's get into this video. I'm going to talk about DeAndre Baker, right? Charges have been dropped, and it looks like he's going to be playing football soon, right? There's a chance he could be playing football fairly soon. If not this year, then next year, which nobody really expected, right? A lot of people thought DeAndre Baker's career was over, but it's looking good for DeAndre Baker. Charges have been dropped, so we'll get into that. We'll talk about Leonard Williams. We'll talk about Wayne Gallman, and we'll talk about Quincy Wilson, who the Giants just added to their practice squad. So let's start with DeAndre Baker. Charges have been dropped, and I had said back uh, when this whole thing started, the Giants kept DeAndre Baker out of their virtual team meetings, and my prediction was the Giants moved on from him at that point. Um, because, I mean, even if he was in trouble, he could still turn his phone on and talk to his new coaching staff and some of his new teammates and everything. Um, a virtual team meeting on your phone is different than, hey, you have to be at practice in East Rutherford, New Jersey, you know, at 7 in the morning, whatever it might be, right? It's a, it's a different thing, right? You just turn on your phone and you talk to your coaches. You talk to some of your new teammates. Um, when they kept him out of their virtual team meetings back in, I believe it was May, my prediction was the Giants moved on, and they did. At that point, they had moved on. Um, kind of weird how the whole situation worked out because at that point, like I said, I felt like they kind of moved on, and then they eventually waived him in September. And now charges are dropped, and it's like, I'm surprised, I guess. I, I don't really know what to think. It's just such a weird situation because it looked like it was not looking good for DeAndre Baker. And then when the Giants moved on from him, it was like, okay, they must know something. They must know that this is not heading in a good direction. And now DeAndre Baker looks like he's free and ready to go. And like I said, maybe he plays football this year. Maybe he plays football next year. But either way, a lot better than it looked, uh, you know, a month or two months ago for DeAndre Baker. It's starting to look good for him that he can play football again uh, in the near future. So, again, weird. The Giants, Joe Judge came out and said, you know, best of luck to DeAndre Baker, but it looks like the Giants have moved on. It looks like they have moved on, and they have no plans of bringing him back. I know the Chiefs, Bengals, those are some teams that have been mentioned by Paul Schwartz of the New York Post as teams that are interested in DeAndre Baker. Former first-round pick, uh, I don't see why you wouldn't take a chance, right, if you're one of those teams. Might as well take a chance on a guy, former first-rounder. Um, you're not really going to spend too much on him. So, weird situation. All right, let's move on to Leonard Williams, okay? Leonard Williams, right now, he is tied for sixth among all defenders in the NFL in quarterback hits. He has 16. He has 16 quarterback hits. Aaron Donald has 17, okay? So Leonard Williams is having a great season. Great season, okay? And this is the thing about analytics, right? And this is what I've talked about on my videos. I've talked about it on Twitter. The numbers, the analytics were telling us Leonard Williams is a really good football player. And maybe the sacks weren't there, like last year for Leonard Williams. Sacks weren't there for him. Had a half a sack, right, uh, last season. But if you look at the course of his career, quarterback hits, quarterback pressures, he's been one of the league leaders at his position. As an interior defensive lineman, he's been up there. He's been one of the better pass rushing and interior defensive linemen in the NFL. Again, the sacks really haven't been there over the course of his career in a big way. But the analytics told us the kind of player he could or should be based on quarterback hits, quarterback pressures. Eventually, he was going to find his way um, into sacks, right? Eventually, he was going to compile some sacks because, I mean, you know, you're playing the odds here. If you continue to hit the quarterback, continue to get pressure, at some point, you start, you're going to start getting sacks at some point. So that's what's happening this season. And he has five sacks. The sacks are there for him this year on pace for around eight, which would be a career high. Um, previous career high was seven with the Jets. So, Leonard Williams having a great season. Great season. And, uh, you know, I, I talked about this over the offseason. I talked about this on Twitter. I talked about this when he was acquired from the Jets. And I said, look, Leonard Williams is a good football player. It's tough to find interior defensive linemen who can rush the passer like he can. It's, it's just tough. So, I think the Giants should really do whatever they can to keep him. So, Leonard Williams, great season. We'll move on to Wayne Gallman right now. He has a 47% rush yards over expectation percentage. So again, rush yards over expectation, there's an expected amount of yards you're supposed to get as a running back on a particular play based on blocking, the speed of the running back, the overall situation of the play. It's an NFL next-gen stat. 
and then there's the yards you actually get as a running back. And either you exceed what you're expected to get or, you know, you don't exactly reach where you're supposed to get, right? And that's kind of Devonta Freeman. Devonta Freeman, you know, people call him Devonta. People call him Devonte. We'll call him Devonta Freeman. Uh, I've heard both pronunciations, so we'll just go with Devonta, I guess. Devonta Freeman, uh, one of the lowest. So he's not getting yards uh, when he hasn't really been healthy lately, but when he was healthy, he wasn't really getting yards that he was supposed to get. So his rush yards over expectation percentage was around um, 29%, not very good. But Wayne Gallman right now, 47% rush yards over expectation percentage, sixth among running backs in the NFL, higher than Dalvin Cook. So overall, he's a really good backup running back to have on your team, especially a situation like the Giants have right now with Saquon Barkley out for the season. To put Wayne Gallman in there and to do what he's doing, he had two touchdowns. Um, versus the Eagles on Sunday, and he needs to be their bell count running back moving forward in these final six games, without question. So when this video with Quincy Wilson, Quincy Wilson, the Giants added to their practice squad, former second round pick of the Indianapolis Colts in 2017. In 2018, allowed a passer rating of 83 on 40 targets, pretty good. 2019 struggled around a passer rating of 140, traded to the Jets, played with the Jets this season a little bit, uh, like 25 snaps, and then he was released recently so the Giants have added him to the practice squad we'll see right I guess they just want to take a chance